chlorine gas. So what we need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is just convert to moles, divide by coefficient. Correct. So I'll do the iron first. All right. So I'm going to take 114 grams, I won't put the point zero, of Fe over 1. And then I'll say 50, now it's 55.8, I think. Yeah, 55.8 grams of iron from the periodic table is one mole of iron. And what does that come out to be, Mr. Sams? That is uh, 2.04. And then uh, and that's moles. Why don't you go ahead and divide by the coefficient? The coefficient in this case is a two okay. from up here. So that gives us 1.02. Yeah, 1.02. So just kind of keep that number in your brain. And then for the chlorine, I'm going to say 252.7 grams of chlorine gas, Cl2 now. Now the molar mass of chlorine is not 35.5. Or it is 35.5. That's just for Cl, but we have Cl2, have so it's going to be 71. 71 grams of Cl. Uh, two to one mole mole of Cl2. And that gives us 3.56 moles. 3.56 moles. Good. Divide by the coefficient, which of course in this case is a 3. Which is 1.19. And that's that, that. This isn't really a, a unit um, because it's just so 1.02. Of course, is smaller than 1.19. So the limiting reactant is the iron. Yes. So actually, I'm going to relabel this. So if I've got iron. Fe, two Fe's, right, plus three chlorines, you will not necessarily need to rewrite this, makes uh, two iron chlorides. And this yeah, iron. is the limiting reactant. I forgot. <laughs> and then actually right now I'm going to write down the number of moles. So I'm going to go back a screen for just a moment. The moles were 2.04 and 3.56. So this was 2.04 moles. And this was 3.56 moles. So once I've converted to moles, I can actually save some steps. You'll see an advantage to this problem. So now, part all right. Next part C says how many grams of iron three chloride is formed. So grams here. How but many? which one do I work with, Mr. We Sam? always use the limiting reactant because that one is going to be used up first. The excess we've got leftovers, so we we don't know how much leftover we have at this point, and so we need to work with the limiting reactant only now. So I'm going to just do a conversion. Oops, uh -oh. I just did something wrong there. Yep. Um, I'm going to just do it down here. 2.04 moles of iron. I can save a step, and I was not even trying to save a step. That was silly of me. Then I can just convert moles to moles. I can say 2 moles of iron. That's from the balanced equation, this 2 right here. And that's equal to 2 moles of iron chloride. And it wants grams, so I do need to do a gram conversion. Yep. So I can say 1 mole of FeCl3 is equal to so many grams of FeCl3. That is just from the uh, periodic table. And so the molar mass is 55.8 plus 35.4 plus 35.5 or whatever. And, just, and, and it comes I just about had it in my calculator. I had a syntax error. 162.3. 162.3. And so when we just do the mathematics, it's going to be about 300. 331. 331 grams of FeCl3. You see, the beauty of this particular methodology, if you recall back to last year, you would have converted grams of this to grams of this, and then grams of this to grams of this, and taken the lowest one. I only had to do one stoichiometric line after I had done the mole calculations. And if there are multiple parts to this problem, it is much easier to just convert Did to moles. Did you say multiple parts, Mr. Bergman? You mean like next part, which is how much oh, there are more parts is left over? Well, you see, I knew it was coming up because I wrote the question. All right, so... And I'm going to rewrite the equation because I always start with a balanced chemical equation. Now, what do I know now? All right, so we had uh, moles of our things is what we were at a little while ago. 2.04, I believe it was, and then 3. Point, I forget. 3.56 moles of Cl2. Now, we want to know how much excess reagent is left over at the end of the experiment. Now, which one's the excess reagent? Well, it's the one that's not the limiting reagent or the limiting reactant. So if Fe is limiting, then Cl2 is excess. Now, we need to figure out how much excess is left over, so we're going to start with our limiting reactant. Again, 2.04 moles of Fe. Now, it's moles, not grams. We right. have to save a step. We're that's a beautiful there. thing. Now, let's figure out how many moles of Cl2 would have reacted with that, so let's just do a mole-to-mole -mole ratio. So that would be two moles of Fe. This is from the coefficients in the balance equation, is three moles of Cl2. And since we actually asked probably you want to go to grams, we're going to go one more step and go all the way to the grams of the chlorine and then subtract from like 200 and whatever that number was. Okay. And then we'll say one mole 
of chlorine is equal to 71 grams of chlorine, molar mass, right? Yep. Cl2. And you come up with? 217. 217 grams of chlorine. Now, what does that number represent? Actually, Mr. Bergen, let's have an extra digit in there. Can we call it 217.3? 0.3, okay. Thank you. And that would be the amount of grams that were? Reacted. That's reacted. how much got used up with the iron. So, if we look at the problem, we started with 252.7 grams. Right, so 252.7 grams. And we found out that we just needed 217.3. You only used up 217.3 grams of chlorine, so of course you simply subtract. When you subtract these on your calculator, it's 35.4 grams of chlorine. Less is how much, how much that's left over. Make sense? Moving on. Next one, we've got more to do for do you. Want to, do we want to do another uh, limiting reactant problem? You know, Norman? guys, I think you get the idea. I think this is probably If excessive. you need to practice, do this one. It will help you out when you get to class. But I think in the interest of time, so this doesn't get too terribly long. Bingo, you on. are amazing, Mr. Sams. Yeah. Okay. Should I get my harmonica? I mean, my... Uh, the ukulele. The ukulele out? Uh, let's let's no. just move to percent yield. Okay, percent yield. I, I think it I might rather do a limiting reactant problem than uh, listen oh. to more ukulele. Okay, you don't like my voice? What? No, I didn't. All right. Happy. All right. Percent yield, very simple problem, folks. You can read these rules. Balanced equation, right amount that you give, and this is similar. The key thing is, is actually you're going to, sometimes you don't make as much as you expect to make, and then we have a uh, percent yield. It's probably best if you look at these instructions, and we'll do an, an example. example. Nitrogen gas. Nitrogen, I think it's N2. It is N2. Oh, uh, Mr. Bergman's learning. Reacts Brinkelhoff. with hydrogen, that's BH2. That's the uh, and Brinkelhoff. And it makes ammonia. Ammonia is, as it says, NH3. By the way, ammonia is just one you'd want to commit to memory. And just know that ammonia is NH3. Know that methane is uh, yeah. CH4. Just a few of those little simple compounds you just need to know. When you balance this one, this is a little tricky. I think you guys are getting good at this. This will be a 2, this will be a 3, yeah. and this is a 1. Yep. Okay, now I've got some information. All right, it says we have 15.5 liters of N2 reacts at STP to make 30 liters of ammonia. What is the percentage yield? Now, notice that it says it made 30 liters of ammonia. That is, if you did this in a laboratory or industrial setting, and that's how much stuff you actually got out of the reactor. Now, the stuff you always get out is never the amount that you expect it to be. Ever, 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 ever. I don't care how good you are, you will never get a 100% yield. Actually, you might get 120% yield, but that just means you have something unreactive and contaminated and weird, but it will never be perfect. So we're going to call that our actual yield in the, uh, that we actually produce, the 30 liters. So we need to figure out how much is expected. What if we theoretically, what should we have gotten? And we're going to do that through stoichiometry. I love that word. I do too. It's, it's amazing. Okay. I think I'll name my next child stoichiometry. I thought you weren't having any more kids. Yeah, okay, fine. We're done. I'll just okay. rename Zeke. There you go. All right. So I uh, 50. this is just a simple, folks, uh, uh, leader to leader problem. Actually, you know, I should show them something. You want a shortcut? You want the shortcut leader the to leader? Short, short, shortcut? Short, short, shortcut, because it's all at STP. It doesn't give us any new conditions since they're all at STP. It, it, essentially, you'll have 22.4, and it would balance. You have 22.4 on top and 22.4 on top bottom. And, of course, if you have the same number on top and bottom, they will cancel. So you can actually use the mole-to-mole -mole ratio. You can say 2 liters of NH3. It only works with liter, liter. It won't yes. work with gram to gram. only Never works liters, liters, and it's all at STP. 1 liter of N2, and then, boom, your liters of N2 cancel. I can do this without a hard hard a uh, brain head or whatever it is. A what? <laughs> a hard brain head? I don't know. I, I can do it in my head, okay? <laughs> so this would be uh, 30 31 liters of ammonia. There you go. So that's how much we're expecting were to get out, or usually it's called the theoretical, theoretical amount. So that's 31 liters, and how much did we actually produce according to the problem? 30. It said we made 30. So I'm going to take 30 over 31. So actual over your theoretical you, times 100. So 30 over 31 is 90-some percent. Yes, uh, 96.8 percent, or 97 percent, we can probably call it. Yeah, probably two, probably can keep digits, two digits, so 97 percent. Not terribly difficult. These problems are elementary. All right, percent composition. Percent composition. Let's like resume. Hey, we're back. There we go. There Yay. we go. We were afraid we lost it all, and we were so good. Yes. Especially oh, me. 
Don't you think? No. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, percent comp, folks, you guys, these are so easy. Um, if I want to find the percentage of each element in a particular compound, this is, is, well, it's elementary. It is. So if I have ammonium nitrate, NH4, NO3, uh, the, we need to find the total molar mass, which yep. will be uh, 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 2 times 14. That's the nitrogen compound. Plus, I see there's a nitrogen here and a nitrogen here, two places. Plus four, that's my hydrogens. Plus uh, 16 times three for the oxygens, and I get a total of 80. So the molar mass is 80 grams per mole for ammonium nitrate. So to find the percent composition, I take the nitrogen, the hydrogen, and the oxygen. The nitrogen will simply be 28 divided by 80 times 100, and that gives me 35 percent because there were 28, 2 times 14. For the hydrogen, that will be 4 over 80 times 100. That will be a much smaller percentage. That will be simply 5%. And the oxygen, we could actually subtract from 100, or you could just take uh, 16 times 3. You could do this, by the way, over 80, which is like 48, times 100, and that should be the remainder, which is 60%. So in this particular compound, 60% of the compound is oxygen. By mass. By mass. 5% hydrogen and 35% nitrogen. This is a very elementary um, problem, and you'll go, oh, yeah, I remember that. We have one last thing. Do you ever make errors, Mr. Smith? No, never. Okay. Especially when I play the ukulele. Yeah, well, you must be you must be as good as I am. Oh, yeah. I don't make oh, mistakes yeah. in yeah. that. So um, we have this error equation, and of course you've remembered the error observed minus actual mi divide by actual times 100. You know, technically, by the way, folks, you should put parentheses around this because um, it messes up if you try and do it in the calculator that way. That's right. Order of operations. It's Order a of operations. Bit by the way, this can be a negative number. That means you've got below the, act, the, below the value you should have gotten, or it could be a positive number. So let's say I'm doing um, a particular project, and I'm doing a particular, uh, I'm finding the density of a compound. So I did an experiment, I found the density of gold, doing some particular experiment. And I find the density of gold to be 18.8 um, um, grams per milliliter. I can then look up in a table where somebody has measured accurately, super duper way, amazingly accurately, the density of gold. And if I looked it up in the table, it would be 19.3 grams per milliliter. You just know that off the top of your head? I do. Wow. I do know that off the top of my head. I am Most amazing. Y you are, in yes. fact, two amazings. Too amazing at the same time. I can even spell all the time perfectly. So, mm. um, so if I got 18.8, I did not get the correct answer. No, the correct you did not. answer, the accepted answer, is 19.3. So I'm going to say 18.8 minus 19.3 parentheses divided by 19.3 times 100, and I get a whopping negative 2.6 percent. Now, why is am I saying a negative for 2.6 percent? Um, it's negative, Mr. Brookman, because your number is below the accepted value. Now, let me just say a quick note to some of you who are watching kind of an internet land. If you're doing a percent error, oftentimes you'll see the equation written as an absolute value right here, and then it would just be 2.6 percent. It is a 2.6 percent error, but um, I prefer to leave the sign, the negative sign in this particular case, to tell me that the number is low. Yep. So that's why it's there. If, you, if uh, you're watching this in Internet land or um, our students who maybe go out to the world and see this as the absolute value, they're both correct, but ours tells us more. If it's positive, then we say it's a positive percent error. Yeah, I'm just going to stop it now. Oh, my God.